So those are the benefits. Now, let's go to the get part one, the common frustrations and challenges. Resistance to change. The resistance to change is a big one, associated primarily with fear of job displacement. So this is a big, big challenge I see from a lot of clients who are trying to integrate generative AI. Another is just lack of understanding and expertise. So there's lack of understanding. A lot of managers don't want to integrate generative AI partially because they don't want to appear as noobs. They don't want to appear as unskilled in this area. And so this is a problem. So you really want to think about the learning culture and we'll focus quite a bit on creating a learning culture around generative AI. Integrating into existing systems. Generative AI is a quite new tool, comparatively speaking. I mean, ChatGPT came out and became popular in, in October of 2022. So companies have not yet figured out many ways that I'll talk about, about how you can integrate it into your systems. Concerns over data privacy and security, and I'll definitely talk about that. That'll be part of four of the presentation. The perceived loss of the human touch. That is an issue I've heard about from a number of clients, especially with, from HR, that there's this desire for, H, for a human touch. So people are concerned about that. Now, as part of these challenges, we run into cognitive biases. Cognitive biases are the ways that our brain is miswired. Our brain is not really wired for the modern environment. You probably have heard about that. And that's why we have a number of cognitive biases. We are actually wired for the ancestral savanna environment. When we lived in small tribes of 15 people to 150 people. So that is the environment that our brain is really wired for. And cognitive biases are the consequence of living with an ancestral savanna brain in the modern environment. Status quo bias is a great example. In the ancestral savanna, it was very dangerous for us when the situation changed because our survival was so precarious. If the situation changed in any significant way, it was likely to be a bad thing for us. The main thing that changed was the changing of the seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. In the modern environment, we have many, many more changes that are much more impactful and change our environment. Consider the rise of the smartphone, the rise of the internet, the fiscal crisis of 2008, 2009, the pandemic, of course, the rise of hybrid and remote work, and the rise of generative AI, I mean, the rise of the internet earlier. They all fundamentally changed That's I remember when the internet came around. I remember you know, going and dialing up with AOL online with those sounds, e -E, for those people who remember, you know, I'm, obviously I'm dating myself with that. So our brains are not really wired for new environments. And so we tend to be afraid of new things and we tend to prefer the status quo. And that is called the status quo bias because often a new situation is actually better for us. Taking advantage of a new situation is actually quite a bit better for us if we're willing to do it, but we're often not willing to do it. So the status quo bias is one of the cognitive biases that we need to overcome. So it's a preference for maintaining current practices and resistance to modifying established workflows. So this is a serious issue. So it causes people to be hesitant to experiment with solutions using generative AI. It, there is difficulty in accepting insights informed by generative AI. So solutions and insights, data and practices and flows, workflows, that is a challenge. So you want to make sure to overcome the status quo bias in your organizations. Be aware of it, take notes on this, think about where it will come up in your organization, where you have seen it come up elsewhere, and how you can address it going forward in the field of generative AI. Another one, loss aversion. So in that Savannah environment, we tended to have very few resources. And when we lost those resources, that was very dangerous. Because again, our survival was precarious. So we have an intuition to avoid losses, to avoid losing what we have, even if something new might be much better. So there's a fear of potential losses associated with generative AI that outweighs 
perceived gains. And there is a reluctance to invest time and resources of transition money into generative AI adoption because people don't want to lose them. And so there's an emphasis on negative outcomes, negative outcomes that might be associated with generative AI, especially concerns about generative AI replacing jobs. And so there's a resistance. A lot of the resistance comes from a perceived threat to employment. That's from employees, rank and file staff. From managers, I've seen resistance come from this perception that they don't have these skills and they don't want to show themselves as lacking skills. So there's that loss aversion. So people are averse to losing that negative situations. They're averse to losing resources associated with generative AI adoption. And so you want to think about where in your company might loss adoption, might the loss aversion be an issue for integrating generative AI. And the final cognitive bias I want you to be cognizant of is empathy gap. Empathy gap. So you've heard of empathy, obviously. It's the ability to understand and care about other people's emotions. And empathy gap has to do with the fact that in the Savannah environment, we lived in small tribes, as I mentioned. And it was important for us to care about people like us and be hostile, not care, about people from other tribes. So we have an empathy gap toward those people who are different from us, who we don't perceive on some dimension to be part of our tribe. So we underestimate their emotional reactions. We think that, hey, they should be rational and logical about generative AI adoption, and we underestimate the extent of their emotions. We we don't feel nearly as much empathy toward them as we should. So we underestimate how they feel about generative AI. And many HR leaders and company managers, line operations managers, underestimate resistance to generative AI because of those employee feelings around status quo bias, loss aversion from employment and so on. So there's a real need to focus on providing appropriate emotional support to employees during the transition to integrating generative AI. And failing to address employee concerns empathetically is a serious, serious problem I've seen in a number of companies that we had to fix when we came in to address generative AI adoption. Another issue is that workplace relationships are going to be really changed by generative AI because the workflows are changed, impacted, shifted by generative AI. So there's a misjudgment of the emotions associated with changing these workplace relationships. And there's a neglect of the need to provide adequate training, appropriate training and resources around using generative AI. So think about how the empathy gap might manifest in your organization as you're going forward to integrate generative AI. So what are the dangers of adopting generative AI without adequate support to address these common frustrations, challenges, cognitive biases? There's going to be increased anxiety and stress levels, which don't need to happen if you have adequate support. There's going to be reduced job satisfaction. I've seen this firsthand with surveys that companies ran after trying to integrate generative AI without adequate support. And then I'm coming in to see what's going on. And they're saying, hey, we're having anxiety, stress, reduced job satisfaction, definitely higher turnover rates. So that's the issue. Decreased motivation to participate in initiatives around generative AI and lower commitment to organizational grow goals and or more broadly. So this is a serious issue. There's going to be reduced collaboration and teamwork. I've seen that. This is certainly an issue. And lower overall productivity and efficiency as a result. Even though generative AI will definitely increase your productivity and efficiency when you integrate it correctly, if you don't, you will see lower productivity and lower efficiency and increased error rates and tasks. You'll see reduced creativity and innovation, even though generative AI is a great tool for creativity and innovation and withdrawal from learning and development opportunities. Again, if you don't integrate 
generative AI effectively with adequate support. Now, what are the behavioral science strategies to address these problems and to integrate generative AI effectively? You want to use positive reinforcement to encourage learning. We'll talk about that quite a bit about learning techniques, but thinking about positive reinforcement, that's really helpful. Use nudges to guide behavior changes. So create default options, create positive reinforcement, positive rewards for people to guide their behavior changes, nudging them for people to make it easier for them to do the desirable behavior rather than forcing it top down. Create personalized learning paths. That's really important. Different employees, you'll have some people who are advanced generative AI users already, and you'll have others who are really behind. So you want to make sure to have personalized learning paths. Ensure psychological safety. There's going to be a lot of failure when people start using generative AI. And they need to have psychological safety, which is the ability to fail in new tasks, in new areas, without any significant serious punishment. Because otherwise, why take on new tasks, which you'll inevitably fail in occasionally? Promote open communication and feedback. Employees are worried and anxious about genetic AI. I can guarantee this to you. So you want to promote open communication and feedback around integrating genetic AI. And foster a culture of empathy, of understanding. Address this empathy gap, which is a very natural phenomenon. OK. So these are the strategies that you want to use to address the common frustrations and challenges.